In Ghost Recon Wildlands, you were always the hunter. Yes, the cartel that you were taking down was massive in scale, but your team went in with a plan and immediately started dismantling the cartel operation. Here in Breakpoint, the tables have turned, and you're going to be equal parts a hunter and the one being hunted. Special thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this look at the Ghost Recon Breakpoint closed beta. You guys can play the game on October 4th, and if you pre-order the Gold or Ultimate Edition, you're going to get 3 days early access as well. Make sure you check out the link in the description for more details on that. In this video, I'm going to show you guys 7 new features here in Breakpoint that are bringing some big improvements to the overall gameplay. These new changes will not only deepen the gameplay, but also make it a lot more fun to prepare ahead of time to survive encounters like the one you're going to see right here. My success in clearing that base was made possible because I picked a class in Breakpoint that fits my playstyle. In this case, it's the Panther class. This class is set up for up close and personal damage and stealth. They come with a special ability allowing you to toss smoke and rush through it, but the main perk for me is the ability to use all of your suppressors with no damage reduction, at least for your pistols and your submachine guns. You also get bonuses to your character's stealth abilities, making it harder for enemies to spot and track you, and you also have a faster overall movement speed. If you're playing the open world or story parts on your own, you might want to pick the Medic class, which has a self-revive option if you get in over your head. That'll get you back into the fight without a respawn. If you're playing with friends, the Medic class can also revive them remotely with a Medic drone, which we found to be incredibly useful when trying out some of the co-op. Assault class is going to be your classic noisemaker slash troublemaker. He's got extra armor and also shotgun and assault rifle damage bonuses. He also gets a class specific gas grenade for area denial as well as area damage. What's cool about the sharpshooter class is he not only excels at engaging targets at a distance as you would expect, but he also has some abilities including a gadget that lets him auto mark targets in a wide area and he also has armor piercing ammunition. This lets him hit armored enemies as well as drones a bit harder. He also gets bonuses for both his DMRs, his uh, designated marksman rifles, as well as his full on sniper rifles, as well as better breath control when you're trying to land those long distance shots. Besides picking your class, you're also going to want to do a lot of scouting in this game, especially on the higher difficulties. Most of the gameplay you're seeing here is on the hard difficulty. Key to surviving an encounter in Breakpoint is going to be knowing who your enemies are, what classes they are, and where they are. To get this info, you're going to want to use your scout drone. You get it very early on in the game, and it's going to be key because there are a lot more of enemy classes here in Breakpoint compared to previous titles. If you're playing on your own, choosing the target priority based on, for example, snipers that have the high ground and high visibility, as well as heavier armored targets, is going to be super important. You're going to want to take down those high visibility, high armored enemies first if you're playing by yourself, so that if a firefight breaks out and perhaps gets out of control, you'll still be able to take on those more lightly armored and less aware enemies. When dealing with enemies, there is an enemy leveling system, 
But the neat part about the gameplay here in Breakpoint is that careful preparation and ambush tactics will actually let you take on enemies who are far above your level. This is a neat way of handling high level areas where instead of your enemies being bullet sponges, they're just more lethal. So if you can stay quiet and catch them by surprise, you might pull off a really solid ambush. An encounter like that with enemies that outrank you greatly is going to be a high risk, high reward scenario though. As I found out very early on in the game, when I encountered a group of wolves, the highest level enemies that you're going to encounter here in Breakpoint. When moving around in between encounters, you're going to have to deal with much more realistic behaving terrain of the map itself. You're not going to have any Skyrim style mountain climbing here in Breakpoint. The terrain has real life qualities as you're trying to navigate it. Steep mountains might not only be impassable, but even slopes that look like you might be able to make it could end up causing severe injuries if you slip and fall because your stamina has gotten too low. Even if you have the medical gear on you to deal with those injuries, it is going to take a while to not only bandage them, repair them, deal with your health issues, but also for your character to get back to full strength. As you're making your way around the world, you're also going to notice a lot of different ways that your ghost interacts with the terrain. Your character is going to run or walk or climb or swim or wade differently depending on the water they're going through, how deep it is, the mud, the rocks, and the overall type of environment. Those areas are all going to look a little bit different and your character is going to interact with them in slightly subtle different ways. Because of that, you definitely want to consider vehicles, especially helicopters, for dealing with more rough terrain or higher elevations. And just hold shift. Okay, Dave, hold shift. There you go. Oh. <laughs> a key part of the game for dealing with both the terrain and enemy encounters is your bivouac. This is where your ghost can channel his inner Geralt of Rivia, and he can make camp and brew up some potions or MREs for the fight ahead. Preparing before a fight is going to be important, especially if you're taking on some of those higher level encounters like the behemoth drones or large bases if you're playing solo. Go ahead and find a bivouac, and you can unlock more of them by looking for those curls of smoke out in the environment. Make your camp, and then eat and drink to help your character stay in tip-top fighting shape. When you're choosing your preparation at the bivouac, you're going to want to pick the prep that fits your playstyle best, or fits the encounter that's coming up best. As an example, if you check your weapons, you're going to get an accuracy bonus for 10% for the next hour. That's great for snipers or sneaky players like me. If you decide instead to work on your levels, you can then study your manuals like a good combat soldier and get yourself an XP bonus. Limbering up before your fight will give you a stamina bonus and eating will give you a damage reduction. If you're about to do a bunch of exploring on foot, go ahead and drink some water. This will add to your fatigue resistance. Just remember, before you pack up camp, you can only have one of these preparations active at a time, and they're active for one hour. If you're low on supplies, you can also craft consumables like grenades and explosives here as well. If it helps you in that upcoming fight, you can also change your class here at the bivouac, or call in a vehicle that you've purchased at one of the shops. Like I mentioned earlier, even though you're out there preparing for these fights, occasionally you are going to be overwhelmed, or perhaps one of those giant sentinel drones is going to go overhead, which is trying to spot you and call in a ton of reinforcements, including those wolves. So a key part of staying hidden and knowing when not to fight is using the prone camo. If you go prone in all kinds of different environments, you are then able to cover yourself with mud or snow or anything that's nearby to match your environment and hide your overall heat profile and camouflage yourself to avoid being spotted by especially those large drones. Finally guys, one last gameplay addition that I wanted to talk about is where you can actually work on your inner hitman. You can now drag friendlies and enemies around the world. So if you've taken out an enemy and you're worried that uh, there's still too many bad guys left in the base and a patrol might spot the body, you can drag them off into the bushes and either hide them or toss the body off of a cliff. 
when playing co-op, if your friendlies go down in a really bad hot spot, it's much faster to run out there and drag them or carry them to safety before you try and revive them. Again, with so many different enemy archetypes, the heavies, the recons, the close quarters combat guys, and then so many drones in the mix as well, sometimes it's better to hide or get your teammates out of there than just go for that revive. One bonus additional feature is that all of the stuff I've talked about in this video will be completely functional in both single player, if you're playing on your own, or in co-op with friends. And you can also now earn progression in co-op with your friends. You finally have a reason to hop into your friend's campaign, even if he's way behind where you are. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of the new features coming here in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Thank you again to Ubisoft for sponsoring this look and getting me access to the closed beta early so I can record all this footage for you guys. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.